How are we going? Yeah. Woo! How's your day been so far? Amazing. Good. Oh, amazing. That's nice. Cool. So this is a uh, casual session today. Um, so you're, you're, this is a big room, and you're all spread out a bit. If you want to participate and ask some questions, you can move your seats closer to the front, or not. Just stay where you are. Up to you. This is the provocatively titled Why Drupal, Why Now session. Um, for those of you who weren't here this morning, I'm Dave Sparks, um, the chair of Drupal South and a long-time Drupal addict. We have here a, a wonderful panel of um, people from all walks of life coming here to talk about Drupal. I have some casual questions for them about their relationship with Drupal, what they like and what they don't like. And we will be inviting questions from the audience as well. It is a panel discussion. So we have some handheld microphones. And I'll pass them along. Ask you guys to introduce yourselves very briefly, one or two sentences, who you are, what you do, and your relationship with Drupal. Hello, um, I'm Nicole Ritchie. I work for Amazee.io. I'm the um, client services lead and I have worked um, on the delivery side with Drupal for a long time. I used to work at Catalyst, so I've been in the community. A lot of you may know me. I've been around for the last maybe eight, nine years. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Josh Waihe. Um I started my career in Drupal in 2007 at Catalyst. Uh, today I work for Acquia and uh, we're going up 10 years in January. Hi guys, thanks for uh, coming along to the session. I'm Dallas Ramsden. I am a Chief Marketing Officer of X Equals and I've grown into that position from being a, a developer of Drupal for about 10 years. And it was when I realized the power of data for creating personalized digital experiences is what kind of pushed me in the direction of, of marketing. So thank you. Hi, um, my name is Marjorie Tongway. Um, I work for Annex, which is a Canberra-based uh, um, company. Um, so I've been involved with Drupal for just over 10 years now, um, just developing. Um, I started off just doing plain normal Drupal, and then in 2017, um, I sort of switched over to doing sort of GovCMS um, sites mostly. Hi, uh, Alistair O'Neill. I'm the technical product owner for GovCMS, which is out of the Department of Finance in Australia. Um, been going steady with Drupal for, since about 2016. Um, first started building GovCMS sites, ironically, at the time. Um, yeah, and transitioned running teams, running sites to, well, running product. Awesome. Thanks, team. And I'm going to now join you at the seats. Now, uh, my first question, and I'm looking for a volunteer to answer this one first, is positives about Drupal. Where do you think Drupal shines? What's your favorite type of work to do with Drupal? I'll start. I've got a microphone. Um, the big one for me, and a big one I tell potential customers, is flexibility. There's more than one way to skin a cat with Drupal. Uh, and I can say that I have two cats. I don't skin my cats, I skin my Drupal sites. Um, I, I think the fact that you can get in there, you can change it to what you need, you can meld it, you can mold it, that is a great thing. Um, some of the challenges with that is then finding people who can do that. Um, I guess my favorite site, um, sites to build would just be uh, just a non-decoupled site. I prefer just using Drupal as it is, not um, doing sort of fancy stuff with it. I like, um, yeah, similar to you, it's like I like that you can do the same thing 10 different ways and just as you progress throughout your career, you can start off doing it sort of a simple way, then you figure out better ways or more fancy ways of doing stuff. Um, so yeah, that's probably my favourite thing, it's just flexible. Cool, thanks. Um, yeah, so my, my favourite element of, of Drupal is, again, it's like I've alluded to earlier, it's, 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 a, it's a ability to work and model the data that you need when you need it. And um, part of, part of the, the thing where I first was really expanding my mind on uh, the power of Drupal is um, I was in a, in a position uh, with Acquia where I got, to, I got to train 
engineering teams of Aqua's partners, Aqua's customers, and, I, and it was during a very tr uh, uh, trans transformative phase of Drupal. It was going from Drupal 7 into Drupal 8, and I, I was getting to train people Drupal 8. And so I got to, I got to work with a lot of individuals and, and, and experience their empowerment of using Drupal. Um, and then, so, and then there, you know, the developer experience um, was empowered and their team was empowered and that empowers the business. Um, but then interesting thing kind of happened is, is COVID happened. And so, um, and I also happened to move from the U.S. to, 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 um, to New Zealand here. And due to time differences and whatnot, I wasn't, I was no longer, um, it wasn't easy for me to, to, to continue in, in person training. Um, so I, and, and COVID happened. And then, uh, so I switched to a completely on demand, um, learning experience powered, powered, uh, by Drupal. And that's, that's where I really got to see how Drupal is good at, at creating learning digital experiences and powering those experiences of, of, uh, of, of Drupal. And so whether you're talking about a customer journey, you know, where you have to map these waypoints and the data to back up to make sure that they actually are progressing on along that journey. Um, or, you know, the ticketing experience or the, um, you know, educational. I think Drupal has a really awesome, uh, you know, is, is well suited to transform the digital experience of learning. And uh, that's, that's what excites me about Drupal. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I continue to, to be a, a champion of, 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 of Drupal. So thank you. Um, I think... Open source is a really big character for, for Drupal and a big reason to use it as a CMS. Um, you know, and at Acquia, we compete with a lot of proprietary CMS vendors. Uh, and so that open source license and the, the, as a way of saying, you know, you don't need to be paying massive amounts of money for a software license to be able to use something that's free, you know, and all that capability is free. And, it all comes from a community of people that have, you know, they, they care about that, you know, that CMS being produced in a particular way. And so I really like that as well. You know, you don't have a uh, necessarily product managers that sit uh, at the top of an organization trying to envision what's the features that we need to be providing. I mean, there's a little bit of that in the community, but really it's like a duocracy, right? If you're willing to, put the time in to create the feature, fix the bug, produce the patch, engage with the community, you can get that change in there. And so there's this huge empowerment to be able to have the CMS that you want for zero cost and the freedom to create the things and add the things to it um, for, you know, and, and you're not sort of stuck behind, you know, trying to create support requests and get things prioritized through a roadmap and, and all of those, those parts of it. Um, and so there creates from that, you know, a lot of freedom and flexibility, obviously ownership as well, but there's also an entire community of people that are behind that and wanting you to build things in the right way and, and trying to solve things at a global scale, right? Like how do we implement standards and how do we do security so that when someone builds a form, for example, you know, cross site request forgery is just uh, solved. It's a part of the framework. You don't have to think about that as a developer because it's built into the, to the framework if you're using it that way. And there's so many other you know, places where the CMS does that. We just kind of take for granted a little bit. And then finally, you know, um, there's a lot of new CMSs today, especially built on languages like in JavaScript. And there's a real value to uh, a CMS that has matured over time. You know, I think it was only six months ago that the alt tag was added to the image attribute in the React system. You know, that was something we like felt like we'd be solved before 2010, you know, and they're only just doing that into 2022. So the, there's, um, you know, that maturity is not under, to be understated as well, and that's what makes, uh, you know, Drupal a really suitable CMS for those enterprise applications. Cool, and for me it's um, the community. It's, I feel like all you guys, you don't just, go to work, you're not a number that goes to work and, and cooks a recipe, just following on from Matthias's talk this morning. It's the passion that I see, it's, it's you guys coming to the conference, giving talks about all the amazing projects, all the problems you've solved. Um, you're adding to every recipe, you're not just taking it, cooking it. Um, it's definitely the passion that I see in each one of you and, and that's what gives me the passion to go to work every day. Nice, thank you. Um, I guess, you know, we're, we're at a Drupal conference. This is a Drupal audience. Um, they're familiar with Drupal. They know Drupal. 
They hopefully uh, love Drupal. But, you know, to be honest, Drupal's over 20 years old. We've all been doing it for a long time. You know, you've all been doing it for a long time. Aren't you sick of it by now? What keeps you fresh, Josh? Um, so I don't do a whole lot of development with Drupal these days. I do it, you know, sort of advantageously. And so I'm kind of more like, you know, like the next time I go to work on a Drupal site, I'm like, oh, it's, I see it's moved the major version. I need to upgrade. And oh, I'm in Composer hell. And I'll just blow it away and start over or something like that. So I, I kind of learn, th you know, through these snapshots of, of how far it's kind of moved. Um, so what was the question again? I've got. What keeps you fresh, bro? Oh, it keeps me fresh for Drupal. That's a real weird question to ask. Um, so, yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't tell you that one was coming up, bro. <laughs> so I, I, I will think about, um, I think it's a really good question in the sense that um, Drupal being uh, mature is, uh, it can sometimes get stuck in some of the ways that we have done things in the web and they have just the ways that we've always done it, and so we kind of recreate the wheel in the way that it's always been done. Whereas, you know, new CMSs can think about things fresh, like, you know, how do people want to do it today? And so a good example of that might be something like content type creation. She watched a number of demos today where, you know, we were looking at content type creation or something of the sort, and that's actually a very um, slow and painful experience compared to some of the ways of data modeling and other CMSs today. But it's the way that we've always done it and like there's been a lot of conversation on how we kind of move on to something else and it's been a bit of a, uh, a challenge. Um, but I think that also is, you know, the, the space for opportunity for Drupal and that's what, you know, kind of go back to the, the point about being fresh is we can actually um, take time to think about some of those things and ask some of those questions and have the community discussion and we're not sort of stuck. You know, to go back to my first point about being open, we can you know, have that freedom to continue to, to change. Um, so I think more broadly, um, obviously I've been excited by web for a long time. There's always a lot of stuff that's happening. There's always change, even if it's not Drupal. Um, doing it since 98 so a lot of things have changed i don't use notepad too much anymore thankfully um but I, I think because of well at least my current position and also that i know that i like to solve problems is i've got a bunch of customers that have problems that they wanted solved so is that based off my experience is that based off say limitations in my platform um or what other things are out there that could help move those things forward i think the fact that I'm thrown into a position to help facilitate something like that. Keeps me fresh. Just happens to be wrapped in that Drupal space where a lot of creative things are happening. Nice, thank you. I, I got a. I'll, I'll just jump to a question for Marge there. I, I enjoyed your talk this morning about uh, getting a site done and dusted uh, in three weeks <laughs> <laughs> on a six-week timeline. So, is that? Do you, do you often take that long to do a website? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> um, no, I wouldn't normally do it in three weeks. <laughs> um, so even the six weeks, um, it was definitely doable in six weeks. But yeah, I guess um, the things that caused it to be three weeks, three weeks weren't sort of a bit out of my control. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's, I guess I love the fact that yeah, you can sort of build things quickly when you need to, if, assuming everything else around you is working. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess Drupal does have um, a reputation for doing big projects, large scale content, long development time. Um, I don't imagine you would have had a vast number of hours inside that three weeks to be doing hard dev and coding. So you must have been able to work and put things together uh, with site building yeah, and, yeah. and theming, yeah? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and we tried to reuse as many components as possible. So we weren't like, every time there's um, like some theming stuff was done, we'd, we'd build it once and just make sure it would um, fit all purposes. We possibly could. So. I mean, uh, within the Gov CMS uh, community, you guys have been working with a, a distribution for a long time, a relatively long time, I guess. Um, with the maturity of the Drupal product and the maturity of that distribution, are you seeing lead times speed up, come down? You don't want to say yes to that? You, you, you want more time? 
you're still thinking. Um, look, when uh, obviously I've got visibility of when things are getting provisioned on our platform and then obviously the delivery point. Um, I'd say those who are already in the system or already have the background with Drupal, I think they're getting better return times. Um, for those that are new to the process, it's the same old, hey, I still need to feel like I know what I'm doing. Can we get the right people on board? Um, all of those. And of course, also there's a scale thing there as well. Um, of course, larger sites will always take larger amounts of time. Uh, and of course, the amount of resources you've got about available. Um, existing customers are improving in my mind eye. Um, for other ones, a bit of a mixed bag depending on that skill set. Nice. Thank you for that. Dallas. Cool. So, thanks. Um, so this is back to what keeps... Yeah, I mean, I guess you, you've cool. worked across a number of different areas. Um, yeah. Um, you've worked with, with different end user groups and in different roles within the Drupal uh, ecosystem. So, you know, what keeps you fresh and looking so so young and spry despite sure, your, sure, uh, sure. your experience? I, I mean, things that keep me awake at night are like, what, what, how can we push the, the envelope of again, coming back to digital experience, like um, I, I had a recent, not a, I don't know if it was an epiphany, but it was, a, it was a defining moment in my life where like I had accidentally purchased my 17 month old kid a uh, Happy Meal and in that Happy Meal was a, um, a like a, a toy kit thing that you, um, it's augmented reality of the Just Dance game. So if you're familiar with Just Dance, it's you have to follow this, um, you know, dance routine and whatnot. But what what this McDonald's Happy Meal toy was was, you know, sh showing you know whatever the target audience of Happy Meals are, um, you know, like you scan a you QR code scan a, a thing and it takes you to this uh, you know website and then you have to give it access to your camera and then from your camera you have like augmented reality in your browser like. You know, like you know, me shaking my, you know, the one of these shoulders. The, the, uh, you know, it's like how can I, how I want to, I want to power this with Drupal. How how can we, how can we expand? Like this is where the internet is going, right? We like I would encourage all of us to think about what's the next evolution past the website, right? With like the website is, is certainly needed and definitely is needed, um, but what it, how can how are how are you know kids that are reading you know augmented reality Happy Meals. In five, ten years' time, right? Like, there, well, how can we power that? And Drupal is built for the internet of tomorrow because of its data modeling. And uh, so, anyway, so I, I, that's just some random thoughts, and that keeps me keeps me awake at night. Nice, thank you, uh, Nicole. You've been away uh, from from the commercial coalface for a, a wee while, working on a different project. Um, coming back, um, any thoughts or reflections on where Drupal has come to in in that time that you were away from it? On the day to day, um, I guess sort of for me coming back from maternity leave and and trying to get up to speed again because so much has changed even in in the hosting space. Um, and it's really interesting. Maybe two three years ago when we were talking to customers, we had lots of um, customers asking us, "Are you doing Laravel? Are you supporting um, different CMSs?" And I feel like just recently all the um, inquiries we're having, everyone's going back or being drawn back to Drupal. Um, and it's really nice. And for me, having worked on the delivery side, um, that's what I love about Drupal, because it's not just a website builder. It's not just a um, cheap and cheerful website. It is, I've worked on a, on a big project with Tourism New Zealand where it was really drilling into, um, we were building a bit big pl platform, there was lots of data, there was um, a big thing for them was security, it was just a complexity in seeing how powerful Drupal is to um, what you can, can drive with Drupal is really amazing. Nice. Uh, I guess I've been working with Drupal for about 15 years and um, I, I, I genuinely feel like, you know, there's a maturity with the product and um, a maturity with our, uh, our developer team and our, uh, our audience and our clients understand so much more than they did 10 or 15 years ago. Our clients are upskilling, our clients are you know, aggressive and ambitious and they want digital experiences. Um, and you know, we're, we're at this moment of change where Drupal 10 is out. Um, we're talking about the, the internet of tomorrow, the, the Drupal of the future. Um, are any of you have anything special or uh, you know 
A, either you're looking forward to from the next few releases of Drupal, or um, B, something that's on your wish list that you really want to see, a, a challenge you want to throw out to the community to, uh, to bring you some magic. So one thing that I think has a huge amount of potential, um, and I don't, don't know that it's quite realized yet, is Drupal's recipes uh, initiative. So that initiative, I think, was kind of born out of replacing the install profile issue. Install profiles you know, give you a way to predefine how you install Drupal, come with like a Drupal distribution of sorts. Uh, but there's a lot of problems with that, like you know, the, the way that you ship updates and the dependency that it had on installation profiles created a lot of lock-in for people who used a install profile of a particular type. See a lot of nod heads nodding like you, bro. That's me. So um, install uh, recipes are really cool because there would be ways of essentially shipping two main things. One is uh, config, and two would be dependency, like composer, file sort of thing. Sounds a little bit like a module, right? Um, but you would be able to do this for you know, config across multiple modules. So you can kind of say this is how you would configure this collection of modules together uh, to create this type of feature. Right? So you can think about features if you're a Drupal 7. Um, person. So that kind of thing then becomes shippable and then deployable. Uh, I think at the moment they're thinking about deploying that through code like Drupal's always done. But the other kind of big thought that um, I don't think we've yet kind of explored is like, you know, and I was saying this before, we've always done things, we've always, you know, we do things the way we've always done them. Well, back in like 2002 or whenever we started building Drupal, it was like the, the way that you would do um, extensibility was through distribution of code in modules. And so that's what where the module system came from today. But if you think about how extensibility works in a SaaS platform today, like if you're using Slack or if you're using Zoom and you want to turn on an app, you don't download code. In fact, that's a huge security risk because you have all these other companies that are producing those integrations. You don't want to deploy their code on your servers. But that is still the way that Drupal fundamentally works today. And so I think what is really potentially powerful about this recipes initiative is that we could deploy them because they're just static declarations, they're just YAML files and JSON content. We could actually be deploying those over the cloud, over HTTP, and not have to deploy them through the file system. And if we have the underlying PHP, so Drupal core or framework that can run those recipes, then we can uh, have those features installed without the need for adding additional code. I think there's still, you know, uh, the need to also then create a cloud-like extensibility framework just like these SaaS companies have that allow Drupal to become extensible in that way. But you know, before we kind of get there, I think this is where recipes could potentially go and be quite an exciting thing for our future. Thanks. Um, so again, I think uh, Josh made a, um, a, a comment, you know, we, we've done things that, the way we've always have, and I to me, um, if we do want to get new innovation, like new thinking into into the Drupal um, ecosystem here, um, we have to make it easy. We need to make it e easier for n people new to Drupal to get into Drupal. Um, and so recipes certainly are a way. Uh, could be a way to do that. Another way that I would really like to see is how can we improve the documentation of Drupal because that's one of the biggest uh, barriers to learning Drupal is it's there's so many different versions. You know, there's so many different. Uh, ways of doing things that are just no longer applicable, and it's it's, it's really hard and discouraging for learner and people that are trying to learn to become experts in Drupal. It's really really challenging, and um, so what I would like to see is how can we how can we make it easier for for new thinking and new people to to bring in and cross pollinate their ideas. And although there's been this has been a wonderful conference because there's so many you know innovative ideas that are coming out of this, and it's because of the cross pollination. And so so. Anyway, I would like to see uh, Drupal documentation or ways that people can learn Drupal to be to be improved. I'd echo that. Yeah, um, uh, documentation is important. Documentation is hard to keep on top of. Um, probably having some I don't know better version controls around those sort of things. Um, but the big one for me is also just that perception. A lot of the conversations I have with people who are thinking about CMS and of course Drupal underneath is, well, it sounds very hard, or that sounds very technical. For a lot of the things that people are doing, it's not. Uh, if you're just doing those sort of more basic or simpler sites, as Marge was saying earlier, it's 
a bit of familiarity. A lot of people want to see the UI behind the scenes. It's relatively simple in my mind. Granted, I've been looking at it for a long time now, but it's otherwise a CMS for people in that space. It can be a lot more, but that perception and understanding of what it is is far off from where it should be. Yeah, I guess from my, my personal perspective, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a developer. I don't come from a dev background. I'm a, I'm a content person. I like publishing stuff on the internet, you know. Um, websites, they'll catch on, I reckon. Um, and I think that, that uh, the Drupal editorial experience, you know, the admin experience, um, getting content up online is, um, can be easy. And I say that after working with it for 15 years. But for people coming in new, it, it can be a little bit um, intimidating and not quite as much fun as it could be. So I think that's, that's probably my big work on, you know, documentation, guides, making things easy, um, and bringing a bit of joy back into it. You know, I, um, I got buttonholed at a barbecue uh, a few weeks, months ago now, I guess. Um, it wasn't raining, so it must have been maybe a year ago. Um, and someone said, what do you do? And I say, oh, I make websites. And I'm like, uh. He's like, oh, I've got a website I need to replace. Um, some hand-built hand HTML he'd had for 12 years. And so um, uh, he didn't have any money. Um, he, did, he did give me a beer. Um, and so I was like, okay. I sent him off to a, 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 a SaaS product, a non-Drupal product. Um, I won't say the name because I, I promised I wouldn't swear at this conference. But... Um, and we, we helped him onboard him into that. And it was just a, a really different experience to, to eat someone else's dog food, you know, and, and, and see how they do it. And um, it was really easy. Um, it was really easy to do horrible, horrible things. Um, it was really easy to make a terrible, terrible web page. And um, it, was, it was really sobering to view source and see what that output was and see just how slow a, a six-page brochure site could be. So, you know, <laughs> and so I think there's an opportunity for Drupal to bring that power and that speed and that deployment, you know, with a fun experience that, that civilians, that barbecue goers can, can, can get engaged with. Um, we've got about two minutes left. So um, any last remarks from anyone that would answer the question, why Drupal, why now? Lost for words. Um, look, look, I think Josh said it earlier. Open source, big thing about it. If there is an issue, someone's usually already found it, or you can report it. It is visible somewhere. It can be worked on. Um, it's frustrating that things land in roadmaps and uh, you know for Q3 2030, but <laughs> at least if it's open source, you can see the issue, you can track it, you can help it, you can push it along. That alone means you've got more control, in my mind. Cool. In the last minute we have left, any questions from anyone? Um, oh, yeah. So the, the question is, what do we think about uh, Dries' keynote statement, Drupal is for ambitious site builders? Oh, well, oh, you're looking at me, so I'll answer that one quickly. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we've, we've always been site builder focused as a, as a company that's kind of been driven by the people we've had on the team um, and by, you know, my love of publishing stuff on the internet with, with ignorance of code. Um, so I think that the, the, the power of site building has always been um, a, a Drupal superpower, and I think that it should continue to be so. I think um, when you think about the Drupal community, the majority, especially the majority of people that contribute to Drupal Core, they probably wouldn't associate themselves as site builders. Might start as a site builder. Yeah, it's true. Um, I think site building. Um, there's a lot of like low code CMS built, you know, around today, and so that space I think is quite competitive. And the term ambitious might not be a um, 
accurate enough word to capture the people that really fit into the Drupal space that might become contributors, which are really coders is what we were really saying. Like people, coders who don't want to write coders are the people that we want to target, right? Because there are people who are site builders that don't know how to code. But in Drupal, it's sort of like if you're a developer, it's really easy to build a site without having to write a, a line of code. And then when you need to, you can. And that's pretty awesome too. So like a good example, I built uh, a maintain a Drupal site and um, I wanted to do Jira integration and there was, a, there was a module for it, but I looked at it and it didn't have the style of integration or the way I wanted to set it up in there. And I was like, you know what, there's a, there's a composer framework for Jira PHP. So I just composer require that custom module and you know, the bespoke form and I could integrate it really clearly. Uh, some people might slap me on the wrist for writing something custom and there's something contrib and I didn't contribute to it. That's true. But, um, the, the point being, right, was that like I can do, get most of the functionality I needed when I wanted it, and then the moment that I couldn't, it was very easy for me to adopt a development and be able to do that, which is not true for people who are typical low-code site builders or in a SaaS-based hosting platform. Yeah. Does does um, site builder have a term that resonates with the wider industry, right? Rather than just Drupal, because it has a specific one. I think so. Although I think the um, the term site might be too limiting, because content hosting I think is much broader than a website. You know, um, so it's more like experience builder or just a low code developer. One of those words probably more better. No, thank you. I think we're out of time, people. I will let you go. Um, there's a short break now before we head into the uh, the next awards session. So, if you know you want to ask us questions or have some discussion amongst yourselves around this issue, I think it's a um, within the Drupal South committee, um, within the conference speakers. It's a it's a conversation we often have about how do we advocate for Drupal more? How do we get people? To experience the 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 joy and the power that, that we do from Drupal. Um, so thanks for your time. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs>